We will have also seen that the core has three basic mandates the protection of critical national assets, the licensing and uh, supervision and monitoring of welfare. Yes, we worked on welfare. We, 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 we provided some platforms. On how to improve on the welfare because when you when you work on the welfare of your staff, uh, you will have seen productivity. They will give you their best, and so we provided some some platforms of provision of a housing scheme for our staff, and we worked on their uh, our personnel insurance scheme where uh, uh, we gave a lot of benefits, you know, uh, to our staff who lost their life with the to the disease families, you know, you know, and then uh, uh, even group uh, accident entitlements, burial entitlements, you know, and uh, we we're able to pay that for for the past five, six years in the COVID, it, it never happened. Mm -hmm. When we came, we had to do it to boost the morale of our staff. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we have done a lot in the welfare scheme. We have also improved in our medical services, we have equipped our sick bay where we have now our staff, members of our staff, families visit that sick bay, mm. you know, for treatment. So we have done a lot in the area of welfare, you know, to our staff. And Dr. Aldi, yours is a very unique organization. Yes. Set up in 1967 during yeah. the Civil War. Yeah. And then expanded nationwide in, this, in 1970. Yeah. The law that actually gave you people impetus to run yes. 2003 yes. by a former president or yes. messenger yes. and then amended 2000. So a lot of things have been happening in the Nigeria Civil Defense Corps. But then some will say in protection of the critical assets, all of that was so that your job is the assets of national assets and the citizens to protect them and ensure that they are doing what they're doing. Yes. Even up to the point of saying, manage the private security organizations. Yes. They are under your birth. Yes. But you have said last year was really turbulent. Yes. Last year we heard a lot about crude oil theft. Yes. How were you guys able to manage that? Especially when you were here, I'm sure you heard of it, where they tell you that, or even the security personnel are involved. Well, um, you see, uh, I think till today, 
And let me say that uh, the mainstay of Nigerian economy is still well. And because of the role that the is playing in the protection of critical assets and infrastructure, uh, pipelines that this oil passes through, uh, the protection lies with the core. And I'd like to tell you that we have achieved so much in that area. We have achieved so much, so, 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 so much. And then if you not see the thing is rising, I will say more because we have arrested over 570 suspects in well tapped. These bad guys who have gone to temper and puncture the pipelines, yeah. you know, for scooping. We have prosecuted over 400, convicted over 120. Hmm. So, uh, but you see, what is more worrisome, my brother, is the issue of illegal oil refineries. You, we have destroyed so far close to 100. That's just the NSCDC. Yes. Not the Navy. No. Not the Army. No. NSCDC. But you see, what is so disturbing is that you destroy today. Tomorrow you see reincarnation. So, in fact, you will destroy this, the same uh, oil, illegal environment you will destroy, you will see the next day it will come up again. So, it's so disturbing that I, I don't know, we don't understand what is really happening. But I'd like to tell you that the core has developed strategies to deal head on with this work now. And I want to assure you mm -hmm. that with the synergy and the collaboration. Because this time around, we have seen the three C's really practically conspicuously in practice. Coordination, collaboration, and cooperation. Mm. Between and the services. And it's working. It's working. It's working very, very well. So when, when you hear, yes, over 500 arrested. Yes. Prosecuting over 400. Yes. Convicted over 100. Yes. But you're worried about the proliferation of these refineries. Yes, illegal. Illegal, the illegal refineries. Yes. yes. Out there, the, no, the notion out there is that they are, probably, they are coming up again, even after you've done all that you've done. Yes. They keep continuing because yes. some people in power are behind them or are involved. Have you come across some of this and have you made any arrests in that land? Well, you see, uh, no doubt. We're not asking you to name names, though. No, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, the oil theft in the country is properly syndicated. No doubt. And like you rightly pointed out, you realize that the syndicate is like a triangle. Where you have, on the one side, you see, you have security agencies. On the other side, you have the old companies themselves, and on the other side, you have the oil communities. But you see, when we came on board, we, we strengthened our internal disciplinary mechanism to deal decisively with any personnel who is found culpable in abating this, oh, really? this in, or, or if being involved in this illegal uh, square oh, theft. Yeah. So I want to tell you that on record, on record, we have dismissed over 30 personnel. You know, did did you just dismiss them? Dismiss, yes, of no, course. You're not prosecuting them. We, we, do, we are prosecuting some of them. But you know, uh, it, it, it is it's supposed to be in stages. They're in stages. Mm. The dismissal is, is you take this one step, you conclude this one, tomorrow you take this one. So the, the first one we did, it depends on the level of involvement. You understand? But so far, what we have done is we dismiss them. You see, we don't want to make it public, public because uh, uh, it is based on our record. You know, there are certain things that we don't say it outside mm. based on because of the security implication of it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because of national security importance. So. But I'd like to tell you that the co has decisively taken uh, some measures, you know, actually to nip this problem in the boat. And uh, 
come this uh, this this year that we are in now, you will see drastically reduction in this area of illegal world well, Okay, so you're you're dismissing you yes. said you dismissed over thirty. Yeah. But you don't even have enough personnel to secure the the citizens of this nation and the critical assets that you have to work with. How are you coping? The nation is grossly underpoliced. My brother, if you amalgamate the number of ops, all security agencies put together, paramilitary, police, paramilitary, and intelligence community, I don't think we're up to 1.5 million. In fact, that is why we are leveraging on the spread of the private security organizations, private security companies, because we are, uh, we are, we are, we are, we are mandated to preside over them, to, to regulate them. And so, and because of their spread, they are all over. Hmm. You know, so we now, we have now entered into close partnership with them in terms of uh, information sourcing. You understand? To, to really give us information to act on it swiftly. And I think uh, so far, we have seen good results from what uh, our collaboration with them. Hmm. Uh, because of the relationship we have with them, we supervise them, we monitor them, we even train them. So it is easy for us to come together with, with them, the core and the private security uh, uh, guards mm. organization. It's easy, it's easy because of the relationship that we have. And so we have been leveraging on that relationship. And I'd like to tell you that we have recorded very tremendous success. So if we had this many private security outfits, augmenting what you and your sister agencies are doing, one would think that, okay, they would have some level of equipment that they can work with. I know we're not saying they should bear arms, but we don't even see them with buttons or tasers, buttons that the police constables used to use yes. way back, and those or tasers them. that could, or pepper spray yeah. to help if, if there's an incident in any place. They're just, they just say, uh, is it the uniforms that the criminals will be running away from? No. Or are they allowed to carry this kind of... No, they, they, they are, are not they, allowed they, they, anyway. No, they are. They are only not allowed to carry arms. But uh, uh, non-lethal weapons, uh, uh, they can be allowed to carry that based on certification. Okay. Yes, yeah, there are levels, there are, there are, uh, there are levels, there are different levels of certification that we give for non-lethal, you know, uh, like teasers? Yes, like teasers, like shockers, whatever. And then uh, they, before you now use it, you have to be trained on it. Mm -hmm. Because there are some of the teasers and shockers that can demobilize a person. And if you're not careful, you, the person, you can lose the person. Yeah. And so the, the personnel, the private personnel, must be trained on how to apply it. Are you training them in this? We do. We do. We do train them. Because like I told you, we train them, we monitor them, we supervise them. So when they are recruiting, they will, they will have to inform us. Mm -hmm. And we have our members, because civil defense has a very distinct, a two distinct advantages. Number one, civil defense does not live in barracks. Yeah. Number two, civil defense is trained by virtually all organizations. Mm. And when I say all organizations, I mean the military, the police. The DSS. The DSS, well. yes. The NIA, the what have you. We are trained by all these organizations. So there is a, we have a comparison advantage that uh, we have knowledge of virtually all the services in us and that is why some people will call us jack of all trades but we are master of all not master of none mm. so, 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 so what we do yeah. what we do is that we we train this private guard uh, uh, on us to the directors and the personnel the guards mm. themselves we train them on how to use or apply these uh, uh, implements okay so see this you and criminals increasing, you know where they are. Yeah. You know how to deal with them. Yeah. Considering the situation we find ourselves in different yes. parts of the country, I mean, Christmas Eve, we heard of the attacks in, in Plateau. Sad one there indeed. Yeah, very sad. Um, and even like that, there are other attacks in other places. Yes. Taraba, Benue. And in all of these places, we have civil defense command. Yeah. How do you think this matter can be taken care of one time for all? You see, we have, unfortunately, the nation is passing through a new conflict. 
This conflict is called asymmetric conflict. It's not the normal conventional war. This conflict needs an advanced counter-revolutionary warfare tactics to deal with it. So, my brother, it has not been easy. But I'd like to tell you that following the events, how they unfold, this insecurity situation, this banditry, because it started from insurgency, terrorism, metamorphosis to banditry, kidnapping, and rest. I like to tell you that it has it has been dismantled. It is going down. Mm. It is going down. Before you dare not try to move on road from Abuja to Kaduna. Before you cannot dare it. And now you can move freely and go to Kaduna. Because of the proactive measures of the security agencies, and I like to assure you, I want to, I like to also tell you that the core is involved in all the joint operations nationwide. All the joint operations with the military, the the police, the DSS, the core is there. Operation Adikai, Operation Ayin uh, Mapatima, uh, Operation One Stop. All the joint operation nationwide, the core is involved. The core is involved, mm -hmm. and that is why. Uh, the call can stand high to say yes, we are also part of this. And with this, I am a, I am, I am a practical man. I am a field officer. I'm not an amateur CG. I'm a field officer. I go out and I, I, I know what, I'm, what I see. Mm -hmm. And so this conflict is really degrading. It's coming down. But, and like I told you, uh, this is really the first time we have seen proper coordination and collaboration and cooperation between security agencies. When you talk about the number of guards per person, yeah. it recommended is one guard per 25 people. If we were talking about guards, yeah. you were talking about at least 10 people going to 100 citizens. Yes. Now, in this situation where you said earlier that you don't even have enough personnel, mm -hmm. yes. and you're telling the citizens who are afraid to join in securing themselves, practically join, literally join in securing themselves. No, 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 no. I don't know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. No, you said you need the citizens. Yes, we need to. To give you information. Yes. That's part of joining. If no, I come and, no, Sali, if I come and say, oh, Sali, there's a bicycle here. Yeah. I am part of you now. And I'm pointing out the bicycle to you. Yeah, because as a stakeholder, it's your nation. Exactly. Yeah. Ah, so, so how do you encourage the citizens? How do you get the citizens to get confident enough to come and say, Doctor, how do you see what's going on here? When sometimes it is your personnel, maybe not directly yours, yes. but it's security agents who appear to be part of these criminals. Uh, well, uh, I wouldn't. I, 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 I wouldn't say. I wouldn't accept what you're saying. But I, would, but I know that in my, in my own call, in my service, we have made it abundantly clear separately that any personnel who is involved, involved in any crime, he will face the road of the law. And we have been doing just that. And that's why I told you that we have been sanctioning a lot of them. And that is why you see now civil defense have returned back to Lambert. Yeah. So because of the because we have come with a little difficult to 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 provide safety and security for citizens and crucial assets and infrastructure. And that is why we are we are even protecting schools. If I tell you what we have done the school yes. 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 I've done a lot in that area. Mm. Because schools has been part of the government has already rated schools to be part of critical assets and infrastructure. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then, amazingly, also very disturbing, when we came on board, we gave, we, the mandate that was given to us by the then president was, was that we should provide, come up with a robust program that would provide safety and security for our schools. That was the safe school initiative. That was the safe school, yes. Yeah, it, this was after the proclamation of the social school initiative by Gordon Brown, social school declaration. Mm -hmm. and Gordon Brown came to. So, um, what we did first, you know, when we came into office, was to uh, commission a, a team of researchers. Because I am, I am, I am an intellectual and researcher, and so I commissioned a team of uh, intellectuals who conducted a research called 
vulnerabilities of the analysis of schools in this country. Number one, if I tell you the shocking data revealed after that research was conducted, you will know that we still have a long way to go in this country. At that time, we realized we got over 81,000 schools in Nigeria. Do you know that over 61, over 60,000 schools were porous, no presence of any security, no fencing? Now, that will give you um, and tell you how vulnerable our children and our teachers are. That was the beginning of how the core got involved in self school initiative program. Um, the core now launched special squads, including a female division mm. that was uh, established to provide safety and security for those schools mm. nationwide. We had to establish uh, four operational bases and created a platform called IES. What is IES? IES is Integrated Electronic Arrest Reporting System. It's a platform that, that has a record that we distributed to all most schools in fact, we even, we even included the Parent Teachers Association and community rulers, community leaders, mm. where uh, it's part of the non genetic principle approach that the co developers at that time when we came in, so that we can have uh, re reports from various communities on the suspicion of bandits who will, uh, uh, who will be planning to uh, lay siege you know, on our schools kidnap our children mm. and with this i like to tell you that with this strategy the co has thwarted could has responded and thwarted more than 48 kidnap uh, attempts of school children the recent one just about two weeks or three weeks ago is the casino uh, uh, federal university of this where our, our people had to thwart uh, engage uh, the, the bandits mm. in the gold well before uh, the military finally came to join us. When we come back from this, we will look at how the morale of the personnel, yes, yeah. you talked about the welfare to boost their morale. Yeah. What's being done, for instance, in 2024, what's the plan to increase that morale? And are there going to be more recruitment into the NSCDC? We'll do that one come back from this break. That's okay. This is NBN Network Media, news for all races, connecting you to the world. Dr. Ahmed Awokaoudi, thank you again for speaking with us. Now, um, earlier you talked about when you came on board, what you've done to boost the morale of the people. You also talked about synergy with your sister agents. Yes. So let's start off from that synergy with sister agents. We know that there have been incidents of clashes between the police and the army. There have also been incidents of clashes between the NSCDC and the police and the other agencies. Yes. Can those incidents be done away with one time for all? Is it possible? Well, let me say yes, and then say also no. Because, you know, um, what happens is that, you know, in the field there, uh, sometimes uh, our colleagues from other services, uh, they come, there's this word, they say, supremacy of service. Uh, but you see, uh, many a times, uh, officers, at the top, those who are in the management level usually um, understands, you know, and behave very well. Mm. You know, they synergize and work together very closely, officers at the top. But where we have problem mostly is the junior ones. And sometimes, Agora, let me tell you this as a result of overzealousness. Overzealousness. But we know. We know that every service knows his or her boundary. Mm. You understand? We know our boundaries. Like, for example, let me give you an example. 
the core does not have the same equipment that the military has. I don't know whether something yeah, I understand. Because we cannot boast of one Emra in the core. Mm. The military has several of it. So if you now meet in the theater where the jungle really matures, the core should know who should lead. Yeah. Did you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, if we now talk of going after real hardened criminals, like the arm robbery, hardened criminals who are who use sophisticated you now give it to the police. Police is the head, the lead agency in internal security. Mm-hmm. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. But if you now talk, if you now tell me, some people are gathering somewhere, trying to break a pipeline, mm-hmm. and then you now you tell me, what well, really I should be there? That even what you waiting for you to finish telling me, I should be there. So the issue is that. Agencies should know their country. So, uh, mostly it's the junior staff that actually cause uh, some of this rift. And, and it is sometimes lack of understanding you know, that causes this. I'd like to tell you that uh, the core is poised to cooperate with every service. And that is why I've told you the core is an elite organization that has a very two distinct advantage. In the area of training, we go, we attend training with the military. Mm-hmm. I have attended military courses. Even in my strategic course, the one I attended in MNI, I had generals who were my courses. I had police uh, DIGs and AIGs who were my courses. So once this kind of training is being organized, and then you get officers from other services to join. It increases and improves uh, the, the 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 synergy, yeah. you know, between uh, services. So I think uh, what we need more is more of education, and then to inculcate it in our training programs okay. for people to need to for personnel to see that we need to really to come together. Let's before before we get into the training program and what needs to be added. Yeah. Let's go back again and look at the issue of welfare and morale for the personnel. Yeah. First of all, you're not enough. You said that already. Yes, we um, need five guards. I mean, yes, one guard per 10 citizens. Yeah. We need at least 10 professional security personnel like you yeah. per 100 persons. We yeah. don't even have enough of that. We don't. What more needs to be done? How can... Two, in two ways, how can the citizens appreciate you guys the more so that you can do more? And what does what do you need to do for your personnel for them to advise and go far and beyond what they are doing already? You see, first, uh, when you talk of welfare personnel, you have to talk of incentives. If you have been following us in the call, just this last December, last year, we organized exposed our award night hmm. and encourage and give laurels and awards to our performing athletes who have done the core proud. Come to think of it, you got the, the core had the best of athletes. Yes, in this of country. course, of course. Till date. Of course. So we had to recognize them. We did it, we gave them some uh, recommendation letters. Some the minister even recommended that they should be promoted, you know, uh, you know. And so, and we did that, and we, we, when we got, just gonna come and see how people were so happy. And then, if you also have been following the trajectory of our, pro, of our promotions, you will have seen that this year, we have been able to clear the backlog of our promotions for years. This is the first time, unprecedented, that we had over 21,000 personnel promoted at the same time. Inclusive of those that have not been promoted for years. This is a form of moral boosting mm. in terms of welfare. We have also been paying benefits, debt benefits that have been piled up, piled up for years. When we came on board, we started paying it. Debt benefits, 
uh, even road accident or personnel who, are, who, who were injured in the course of uh, you know, trying to serve the country. Yes, we, were the, we have given more than, more than 5,000 personnel assistance as far as uh, uh, group accident is concerned. You know, having one problem or the other. Like, for example, recently, one of our boys was shot in the Northeast. He, he has lost his one of the leg. We had to produce, we had to buy uh, a Yes, yes. Leg for, for, for the person. And if you see, if you are not told that it is not a normal leg he has, you will not know. So these are the things that we do to boost the morale of staff. And uh, this issue of promotion is not, you know, it, it is very discouraging and disheartening. And, uh, and it kills somebody's morale to serve a country for years. And you know that this promotion, you are entitled to it. And then you serve the country for six, seven, ten years. If some ten years, my brother, and you are not promoted. You know, it kills somebody's morale. Mm. And we have been able to clean that up. You know? So, so I think uh, uh, we... Uh, let, let me let me press myself. I think we have done, we have done well so far. As far as the project is concerned. Well, there's this... Um... Added, you know yeah. when the lizard fell exactly. from local team, <laughs> it looks side side sideways before no somebody. Well so is that yeah. to press yourself? I've done well. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, we thank you for that. Now, there's so much to speak to you about. Yeah. And I know that we don't really have that much time. So let's see. What's the plan for training, for instance? You're talking about some things that need to be added to your training, yes, uh, yes, to your yes, training yes. and how much of training you do for yeah. your people. One of the things I want to bring in there is the area of civil core relations. Yes. Because you live amongst the people. Yeah. But sometimes, when some of your people, personal, when they wear this uniform, the, the citizen is, is yeah, an entity as far as they are concerned. <laughs> I am wearing it. Do you know who I am? I am a member of the NSC Nigeria Securities and Civil Defense Court. That's who I am. Who are you? <laughs> is that part of the training again? That is a completely misconception. Because in the training manual, you know, if you look at our training manual, there is there's what is called, you know, even from our word, from our, our name, civil defense. There is supposed to be civility in our dealings. So the, that's what is called civil military relations. Now, this civil military relations means integrating, you know, uh, civilian dictates and then uh, trying to incorporate, trying to give, do, do your duty, you know, in consonance with the global practice mm. in terms of uh, human rights considerations. And so, any, anybody you see as a person who is not uh, doing his duty, uh, with diligence, trying to put up a zealous needs, you know, intimidation. That is his own behavior. But that's what's in our character. We have included it in our career. That's what is called career progression development courses that we have introduced. This, this training courses cut across all ranks, from junior rank to middle cadre to the, 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 the management mm. and to the top. Yeah. There are courses that you must go. And that's why I told you, I say, um, like now, we have introduced what is called Commander General's Conference. We have done a test for it for about a year. So this year, we are going to see a conference that will, will be enlarged. We're going to start inviting external uh, people like you to come and give us a talk on how to uh, uh, the media relations. How, how, because at the level of management, commanding officers, nationwide, for example, we've gathered them like you say, 200 of them. You can call it to come and give a talk on how uh, these commanding officers will relate with civilians and then how to also uh, uh, respond to camera when, they are, when you are being... Uh, this, uh, they, they call it strategic communication. Yeah. Uh, so at that level, you know, we want to see professional conduct of our personnel. And we have introduced it in all our training schools using a curriculum. In fact, we commissioned a 10-member committee of intellectuals. A professor was the chairman of that committee and some retired military officers, paramilitary officers, even from the intelligence community, who sat for three months and developed that, that, that curriculum for us. It is now, it has been approved by our board. 
the minister is the chairman of the board has approved it and so we have circulated it to all our training schools that is the curriculum we are using now and so that one has reshaped rekindled and has given our business mm -hmm. a new hope and why we why did we do it because we want to uh, key in to the renewable agenda of the president and so we have introduced what is called remote people in doing our, our, our activities our, um, in trying to implement our mandate. We are doing it with all sense of uh, sincerity and uh, patriotism. Mm -hmm. So, uh, your men and yeah, your personnel, your officers and men, yes. I have, I mean, coming in here, I encountered some of them. They were not very civil. I mean, no smile. There's nothing wrong in enforcing the law, but smile while enforcing the law. No smile. They were quite rude, but you are smiling. From the moment I came in here, you've been smiling. You've yeah. been quite nice. So it is it not trickling down? Are they not seeing your example? Well, um, my people will say. That is, you can force the donkey to deliver, <laughs> but you can't force it to drink the water. But I'd like to tell you that one, first, I'm not an armchair CG. Mm -hmm. I'm highly operational and highly cerebral, and I respect human dignity. Perhaps maybe because I'm in, I am an intellectual. I teach, and so I respect human dignity because I never. I cannot see, you can't see, you can't see tomorrow. Mm -hmm. and you can never tell that is what is happening tomorrow. So, um, like I told you, when we came on board, uh, we saw a system that we need to improve upon. And so we are trying to change the psyche of this person, yeah. you know, gradually. And you know, it's not easy to, 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 to do it uh, at a goal. It has to be a gradual thing. So I think, uh, let me assure you that in the next one, two, three months, when, when some of them, because right now, some of them are, are in training. They are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are in various, they are in various uh, training institutions of the core, mm -hmm. doing their training. So as they graduate, because you know, you know they, are, they are many, it's a huge number. The core is about 60,000 plus. So it's a huge number. And you, these trainings take some little time, three months, four months, six, five months, six months. As the case may be, depending on your rank. So, as they come out, you see new behavior, you see the, the change in their behavior. And, and this is what happened before. Yeah. So, this, this, um, I, I, it's interesting that they get this training. But let me ask you this What's the minimum we do for personnel? Uh, it is not always good for us to unveil. It's the, okay. Uh, it's okay if you don't want to unveil. But I'd like to tell you that. Uh, uh, has it been increased or is it going to be increased? Don't tell us a figure. Has it been increased or is it going to be increased? Well, we just recently had uh, uh, an approval by our uh, by the president of the nation, who's in a special meeting, which we, are, we thank him very profoundly. Uh, we have just had an approval to increase our uh, minimum wages, yeah, some allowances, some allowances as well. Okay. Yes, uh, you know, for part of our salaries. Okay. And I know that very soon uh, we'll see the and everybody will be smiling. That is a major moral boost. Yeah, yeah, yes. it is, it is. We're talking about this it matter. Is, it is. <laughs> As we begin to wind up, yes. um, there's been this conversation in some quarters that means look, the civil defense is closer to the people. Yeah. So this idea of or these calls for state police, just convert the civil defense to a state police because they're in every command and they know the people. Yeah. Do you buy into that? Absolutely no. Why? You see, civil defense is a specialized agency. Civil defense is a specialized agency uh, that has membership with what is called International Civil Defense Organization. All this is worldwide. They call it ICDO. Mm -hmm. ICDO. International Civil Defense Organization. Thank you. Now, it is it is a, it is a global thing, so you can't convert it to a government police, a state police. You cannot. It's a specialized agency that is meant to protect, to give certain safety and security for and for equipment 
you know, and then provide, you know, um, uh, some measures on how to uh, prevent some disasters happening so if, worldwide. If you so, merge with the police force, for instance, you wouldn't want that to happen? No, no, no. We, we, that, 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 that's what we, we call marriage of inconvenience. That's marriage of inconvenience. Mm. The police is, yes, police is uh, the father of all. Uh, the police is the head, is the lead agency in internal security, yes. But civil defense is a specialized agency created by government to provide safety and security for critical national assets and infrastructure. So it's a specialized agency. Should there be state police or local government police? Well, um, or should there be, let's call it, should there be state civil defense corps? No, 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 we don't have uh, local government civil defense corps. No, we don't advocate for that. But if you ask me, should there be state police? I think that question should be asked by the police because I'm not a policeman, although I'm a security officer, mm. I'm not a policeman. Mm. But in any case, uh, uh, yes, there is there are some people, and Nigerians are advocating for state police, but I think, uh, uh, to me, we are not yet there. Mm. We are not yet there. Because uh, Nigeria is still practicing, uh, trying to perfect democracy. We are out of the 60, uh, 63 years of existence. If you, if you, if you, if we divorce democratic rule from the military, we realize that Nigeria has been dominated by military, military junters. Sure. And so the, the practice of democracy has not really gone into deep into us. You know. So if you create a uh, state police, you, you, for now it will seem to be. You know, uh, uh, let me even say it to create more problems. One word for your men yeah. and the Nigerians and the Nigerians. If you had a message for your your personnel yeah. and the Nigerians, yes. what would it be in this 2024? Oh, this is going to be very good year. And uh, one word for my men: they should be more vigilant. They should be more dedicated. They should be more. Um, they should not be pessimists. They should know from our word civil defense. There should be some level of element of civility in what we do. We respect human dignity, respect human rights, you know, and um, and the rest. And so, what I expect from my men is the best. Then Nigerians, coincidentally, my brother, if you go out to this country, you see Nigerians behaving very well. But back here at home. You see us doing otherwise. It's I, my father's house. I can't it's, be free. It's, it's amusing. Eh? No, it's, it's my house. I can't be free. Honestly, I'm so bad. But uh, you see, um, my message to Nigerians is that we should continue to be law abiding and that we should be, uh, we should learn to be tolerant of this uh, practice of democracy that we are in. Is we are still in the learning process. In fact, we are still at the tutelage level like, because we just began. And in fact. This is about the first time, maybe when you take Shagari out, this is about the first time we have a very conk, grass rooted president as a politician. And so this is, we have started, this is the rich practice that we have started seeing. And it will take us some time, so Nigerians have to be patient. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, our president is a very patriotic Nigerian. He has the passion to provide solutions to each challenge that we are facing. And we have to be patient. I'd like to tell you that his last word to us was that we must synergize very closely. All security agencies must come together really to provide certain security for Nigerians and also to protect people as an infrastructure. That is his message. And our minister, very young, vibrant, very superlative, energetic woman. He has gingered all of us, all the service chiefs in the interior to live above board and deliver the best of the market to Nigerians. Thank you so much, Dr. Ahmed Abubakaudi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. The show has to come to an end at a point, and this is that point where the show has to come to an end. I want to thank you for letting us be a part of your day like to hear from you.
network media news for all races connecting to the world. This is MBN Network Media News for all races connecting to the world. For those of you thinking that you cannot unseat a sitting president at the tribunal, think again or get ready to be shocked. The truth is, in the face of overwhelming evidence, there's really nothing the judges can do. It is only when matters that are before the court are not proved beyond reasonable doubt then the case is left to the prerogative of the judges that is when you can assume that kind of assumption that you cannot unseat a sitting president at the tribunal